of season two, where he says to her, because of what we do, I don't think that I could be with anybody that I could really care about. I know that he meant that. So uh, we we shall see. But that that's going to be a big that's going to be a big point to sort of segue to to season three, having some broad strokes discussions about it. And and what we're finding with Oliver is Oliver is in a spot in the flashbacks where all of the humanity that he has is being stripped away. The Oliver that you met in the pilot that was a murderer, that was a killer. That's the guy that he is turning into. He's losing his humanity. So season three is very much about how much of his humanity does he want to get back? Does he want to love somebody? Does he want to be a hero? Does he want to write his family's name in Starling City and get back his company? What's important to him? And so we will clearly have to tackle what happened with Felicity uh, very early on. Thank you. Thank you. Find out he's alive, 
and we have to work together, and I get to say something to the effect of, I hate you and I want to kill you, but we have something more important to do. And uh, the uneasy alliance between the Dark Archer and the Green Arrow would be, that would be, that would be sensational. But I, I would imagine, I would imagine Barrowman will be back and up to no good. That would be my, that would be my educated guess. Thank you, thank you. So I'm following a question up with a few things. I apologize for the shirt. It's okay. It's okay. And thank you for being so devoted to all of us. And if you haven't seen the final, uh, the episode of the final episode of season two, what is wrong with you people? <laughs> but my question is, if he had a theme song on the point, what would it be and why? Oh my god. <laughs> Quinn! And 
Paul Bicko looks at me and goes, What the hell is your problem? <laughs> so that in a nutshell is what it's like to look, to work with John. And I have been I have been I have been promised by him that it's gonna get worse before it gets better. <laughs> Yeah, the blooper reel this year is good. <laughs> what is? Thank you. Thank you. Do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> <laughs> Can you give some backstory on that one? Give some backstory on that one. Someone asked this question to me on my Facebook page and I have not seen Frozen. Okay? <laughs> and I thought they were talking about cocaine. <laughs> This was really inappropriate. <laughs> Apparently they weren't. Or maybe this specific person was. But in general, uh, I, I, think the, I think the answer in the most uh, uh, G-rated version possible is, yes, yes, I would. I, I need to watch that movie, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm really worried because I have a daughter now, and anytime I watch stuff like that, I cry like an idiot. <laughs> so, that is, it's not a very Green Arrow-like thing to do. <laughs> By the way, but, but, I, but I, especially right now in Phoenix, I would like to build a snowman and see how long it lasts. <laughs> I started it with the show. Yeah. I, I got up to Vancouver. It was my first day in Vancouver. I've told the story a couple of times. Uh, I got up to Vancouver and uh, Patricia Gonsalves, my archery coach, sat me down. She was like, we're going to do archery. I'm all fired up. And she sat me down and she showed me a 45-minute movie of all of the ways that archery has been done wrong on film and television. <laughs> They call doing archery wrong Legolosing. <laughs> I'm just the messenger. Okay, I'm just repeating what I heard. I don't know, I I I am sure he's fine, I'm sure he does it okay. But the but the big thing is is that is that on the show, um, I'm uh, reaching for nothing, I'm knocking nothing, and I'm firing nothing because there is no safe way to shoot an arrow on a film set. Guns Fine. Arrows, not at all. Like even if you had a rubber tipped head, it would really, really hurt. Um, so the form is the most important thing. So I've actually, I've, I've, I've gotten really into archery. Um, I like to do it, you know, just on my downtime and, 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 and stay up with it. And, um, and I feel like I've gotten good, which is important. Because every once in a while I'll be on a TV show and people will be like, Let's do an archery competition. <laughs> I'm petrified that I'm going to lose, and the show loses all its credibility. So, like, I was on live with Kelly and Michael, and I was watching them warm up, and they were god awful. And and then it and then it comes to the the cameras rolling. And Michael Strahan knocked one like four inches from the bullseye, and Kelly Ripa, who could barely even pull back the bow, her shot was awesome. I thought they wouldn't even hit the target. And I, I had to, I had to get them. I did. <laughs> I, I, oh, I beat them. I beat them. You can, it's, it's, it's online. You can, you can look it up. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Stephen, how's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Um, so I saw your video on Facebook that you posted of you training at Tempest Free Running Academy. Yeah. Um, I actually know a few guys there. Um, William Spencer and Kid Sinclair. Okay. Um, Daniel Labaka is also there. I yep. know those guys. I, I mostly trained with a guy named Paul Darnell, who uh, doubled Henry Cavill in Man of Steel for the Flying Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, my, um, my brother, he's, he's, he lives in LA and he spends a few times there. Um, but I was going to ask you how important is uh, that kind of training for Aero? Is the free running parkour kind of training? It's really good. I mean, it's, it's really important. The, the pilot, if you go back to the pilot, there's this scene where I'm being interrogated by these three guys in masks, and you know they're hitting me with the taser and stuff, or whatever they were doing, and uh, and then you know I tell them that I'm going to kill them, and 
and uh, and then we fight, and there was this parkour sequence that happened shortly thereafter where I did a, I did a relatively simple parkour move, but I felt like I felt like the fact that you could see me doing the action so early on in the pilot caused people to to invest and buy in because you only get one shot, you only get what's that expression? You, you never get a second chance to make a first impression, yeah. and I thought that 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 sequence and that parkour sequence in the second act of the pilot was critical to people that, you know, maybe wanted someone else to play Green Arrow or, or wanted or weren't, you know, particularly pumped about a Green Arrow TV series. Then seeing that sequence, I think maybe changed a couple of minds. So uh, doing parkour and also just staying fit is, is incredibly important. Um, and that, that also, that Tempus is the spot that birthed the salmon ladder and it being a part of the show too. Because our pilot director saw that they had one there and said, "Hey, can you do this?" And I went, uh, "Probably." <laughs> and, and so, yeah. So, I, it's it's very it's super important for me to stay up with that stuff. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, what's the most interesting or embarrassing thing that has happened to you at home? Interesting. I'll tell you what was interesting. There was a young girl named uh, Nikki. Is Nikki here? <laughs> okay. So Nikki came up for a photo today, and, and Nikki was really, Nikki was really nervous, and and the and the actual the uh, the camera or the monitor broke, and so we had to stand there and chat for a little bit, and I felt really bad because. It, because it seemed like, although she wanted a picture, she wanted to get out of there as fast as possible. <laughs> but, uh, so that, so that, that was interesting. Uh, strange, and I don't mean strange in a, in a bad way at all, I like strange, but there was a, uh, there, was a, there was a guy in Vancouver, a really nice guy, who had a bunch of Oliver's tattoos for the show, because he had those tattoos for real. And uh, he had like a shadow tattoo on his back shoulder, and he had me sign it, and he got that tattooed. That was something. <laughs> I'm hoping for a lot more of that. <laughs> no, I mean, you know what, this is, uh, I've done maybe four or five uh, cons this year, and it's uh, it's really rewarding. One of, one of the toughest stretches for us in the season is when we start filming in July, and then the show doesn't come out until October, and we can't, see and experience the fans reacting and appreciating the show. Uh, because that that is what keeps us going on really long days. You know, when, when it's you know it's raining and it's late and you're shooting the scene for five hours. Um, not that it's actually work. It's not let's be clear. But um, <laughs> but uh, seeing the fans reaction is always so uh, so rewarding and, and coming to these Comic Cons and meeting people like Mickey and, and all of you guys, is that it's, it's a huge fuel for the fire of wanting to make the show as good as possible. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, at the end of season two, um, you and Malcolm are fighting, you're struggling, uh, and at the end, you beat him. Later in season two, he comes back, uh, John Barrowman comes back. Yeah, yeah. What was your reaction to that? There's a great John Barrowman meme that says, I don't always die, but when I do, I don't. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I was ecstatic that John came back. When I found out that John was gonna be a regular in, in, in our third season, I was fired up. I went to high five people. And, uh, but I, it, it'll be really interesting to see how Oliver reacts. I don't know how Oliver is going to react because I haven't, I haven't seen the scene yet. My, I mean, my, my short guess would be not well. <laughs> but uh, we, we will see. I'm, I'm just, I'm again. I'm, I'm really grateful that John's going to be a part of the family for, uh, for our third season and hopefully, hopefully, well beyond that. That's awesome. Thank Thanks, you. man. Hi. Um, Hi. Um. Well, I just realized just a few seconds ago that. You were going. You said that you're going to have more DC characters in there, and I was wondering. Um, we've already seen Roy Harper in the show, and he has this comic series now called okay. Red Hood and the Outlaws. 
please, would you beg your your people to have uh, have ready? Are they get on the phone or? Yes. Okay. I, don't, I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> if you could get Red Hood and Starfire on the show. On the show, and if you need someone to do like a flashback of Jason, I will do that. Uh, I try some. I try. The, the the correct answer is not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> That'd be cool. But you know what? One of the one of the good things about our show, I think personally, is that is that the guys that are writing it and creating it are huge Green Arrow fans. I mean, there there are people. That were that have, excuse me that have been on the Green Arrow book, so if there is a character that is popping in the comics, uh, like Starfire, Starfire, right? Yeah. Then I, I would bet that they will eventually incorporate that character into our universe. Right. But be patient. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know if I believe you, but try and be patient. <laughs>
And, and so my MO for the pilot was to do whatever the hell he told me to do. And, and, then, and then thereafter I visited DC and met with Jeff Johns. And it was actually really fun, I got to meet Mike Morell uh, this weekend, which was really cool. Signed the poster that he drew for the pilot for me, which was fantastic. And, uh, and, and after the fact, I did a lot of reading on Green Arrow. Green Arrow Year One, Longbow Hunters. Um, and I read the comics that come out in the New 52. And uh, I mean, the thing, ironically, slight, slightly off topic, the thing that I am most proud of, possibly most proud of in the entirety of the show, is the fact that John Diggle is now a part of the Green Arrow comic book canon. Woo! Like the fact that David Ramsey has done a portrayal that has resonated so much that it's become part of part of the comic book, I think is the greatest compliment that you can pay our show. So, um, yeah, Diggle, Diggle rules. And, uh, so yeah, but now I keep up, now I keep up. Now I know a lot about the character, and uh, Easter egg that not a lot of people caught. In the pilot where I confront Adam Hunt and I say, I want you to transfer this money to Starling City Bank Account 1141. That's November 41. That's when Green Arrow came out. Thank you. Lucky you! Hi. <laughs> uh, if you could trade Roy, I love Roy, but if you could trade Roy for any sidekick, who would it be? I just gotta punt Roy? <laughs> he hasn't even really had a chance. Uh, but if I had to trade him? Nightwing. I see it right there. I have. No, no, no. Why do you actually have three minutes? Oh, three minutes. Great. Good. Seeing as you're competitive. 
Thank you. Woo! 